2024 is already shaping up to be a wildly good year for AI. So it begins, we have Mistral 7B 0.2 on an iPhone Pro. I can already feel how great 2024 is gonna be for cool AI stuff. It seems like we're still accelerating and it's more exciting than ever. We've seen Llama on Apple Watches using the neural compute cores and the new Apple Silicon. And now a lesser known iOS developer has posted on Hacker News about running Mistral 7B 0.2 locally on an iPhone Pro, which is completely nuts. We've seen Llama on iOS devices to a limited extent um, after it was more fully quantized down from the version that runs on macOS. And with some curious tweaks to some tooling released part of GGML for Llama, the developer of this app, which has a weirdly generic name, was actually able to run this completely locally. And I've tried it out and I wanna show you guys how you can get this app for like just a few dollars. Um, I don't know who the developer is. I have no relationship with them, but I think this tooling is incredibly cool. There are also some further implications as to how this pushes Apple even further ahead of the pack in terms of having the most capable uh, heterogeneous hardware to deploy AI on in a general capacity, um, in a, like a build once, deploy everywhere kind of scenario. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So yes, this is Mistral 7B running locally on Apple Silicon. And what's interesting is it's a real app. So ironically, the name of this app is just Offline Chat Private AI. This is different than a lot of the ChatGPT wrappers we saw really about a year ago. For a while on iOS, unless you were running custom code that you wrote or something that you got to pass for in test flight, basically the best we had in terms of proving up what could run on iPhones was the ChatGPT app, which actually runs local AI for whisper inference to do voice prompts. It's actually not using the Siri API to do that locally, which I think is pretty cool. And before this ChatGPT app, Siri was really the first native AI to run on Apple devices. And obviously Apple is making a huge push to make this happen. So again, the name hilariously enough is Offline Chat Private AI. And they've described this as an on-device chatbot. They've been developing this for a while. It was very quietly released and the developer has been diligently making updates. Basically, they describe this as offline chat, the next generation AI chatbot that runs entirely on your device without the internet. You can use it anywhere and your data stays private and secure. While offline chat might not match the prowess of top tier online models due to inherent memory and processing constraints, which we'll talk about later, it stands out as an engaging, versatile tool. Perfect for sparking creativity, use in tasks, etc. Basically, you just need an iPhone Pro with a minimum of six gigs of RAM. But right now, the iPhone 15 Pro, 14 Pro, 13 Pro, 12 Pro, and iPads with enough RAM can do this. Uh, I have an iPhone 14, and this worked just fine. And the update that matters is, is this. Updated the model to Mistral 7B 0.2. This model is truly extraordinary considering its size. And Really, considering its size and its quantization, this is completely insane and the coolest thing I've seen in 2024 so far. So the app is only $2. Uh, I'm gonna try it out for you and I'll link below so you can get to the app store if you also wanna try this out. All right, so let's open the app. I'm gonna give it a really basic prompt where I ask for a grocery list if I wanted to make stir fry and we'll see how it goes. I should say that I tried running this same prompt both with and without a screen recording and with and without uh, Wi-Fi and 5G enabled, and the speed was about the same. Initially, I had some curious worries if I was going to actually have this run much slower if I was screen recording, since on iOS, when you screen record, it basically just dumps everything into memory and then renders it out once you're done. However, my iPhone 14 Pro had plenty of RAM to run this and do a screen recording. And what I think is cool here is the speed is actually pretty reasonable. I wasn't sure what to expect. Uh, I'd use some test flight uh, appliances that actually can run a bunch of different models that have been quantized for iOS and some have been slower and I, I should say this is actually pretty good it's not as fast as some of the really small uh, llama fine tunes and quantizations that are available now but this is more than usable uh, I got seven bullet points to a very usable uh, inference response this recipe basically seems like it would actually probably taste pretty good and yeah now I'm able to actually interact and say thanks ask a follow-up question so it's able to actually maintain a pretty significant context window and context from prior responses, which is something that a lot of those other models in the GGML kind of test app actually couldn't do. It was just kind of one in, one out, and then you'd run out of RAM. So here it's telling me what other meats I could use. I did this just to showcase that the model has a pretty broad uh, amount of knowledge it can draw from, and this was meant to be a really easy task 
that I think would hold up to someone putting something in the ChatGPT. Now, obviously, ChatGPT is faster because the inference is happening on a Microsoft server somewhere. And if you compare this to GPT 3.5 or 3.5 Turbo, obviously, this is going to be much slower. But it's really not that bad, in my opinion. And in just a minute, I'm going to have it do some other kind of different tasks. So this was a general one, kind of an instruct task, make a list of things, give me output. The validity of the output didn't matter too much. So this next one, I'm going to ask it more of an open-ended question about history. Some of these models have kind of a bias, and I wanted to see one if it would talk about American Explorers, period, and also give it sort of something that would have it show some bias or opinion. And I thought it did a great job here. First off, it actually knew who Lewis and Clark were. It understood that they were uh, responsible for the exploration of, of the Louisiana Territory. And I thought it did a great job. The other thing with this is this response almost ran up against the upper limit of the context window and just the number of tokens this model can actually infer running on iOS. And giving something that's prose based, I think shows less of an instruct example and more of kind of a open-ended just interacting with humans and how it converses angle to this LLM. And although it's slower than running Mistral 7B on my 4090, on my dev machine that I use day to day, this is still really not bad. And the answer it gave me was more than intelligible and something that I would use. Now, for the last task, I wanted to give it something that was more of a coding question. Obviously, there are plenty of people that use these models for coding, and I think it's a really great way to benchmark them and see what they can or can't do. Uh, obviously, the amount of context and knowledge necessary to generate basic functions is greater than like remembering facts from a history book or from an article that was used to train these models. And what's cool is this actually used, created a perfectly usable Python function it was heavy on documentation, which uh, Mistral and Mistral-derived models that do coding always seem to be, even the ones that aren't fine-tuned just for coding. But what's cool is this is running locally on iOS, and it is just as capable as what I'm running on my main machine with the full Mistral 7B. And this is just really powerful because it shows you don't actually need internet, you don't need uh, to call out to another server, and it shows that open source AI on Apple Silicon running on device really works. And there were a lot of people who, you know, for many reasons thought this was never gonna be a thing. They thought that the only way this would be possible is if Apple put hundreds of hours into making it work. And right now this is a video working on my phone in real time. I just screen recorded it, uploaded it, and there was no tweaking necessary for this. That said, I think the app could be a little more complex. Um, there are features of um, GGML's kind of test harness that I really like where you can change the model, you can see tokens per second and some other stuff, but all in all, it's a pretty cool app. Maybe not worth $2, but definitely cool. So in my opinion, we're about to enter some really, really exciting times for LLMs. Basically, we're running lesser capable models on device at the pure cost of electricity is happening. And to be fair, this is happening right now. It's easy to extrapolate and see that we will have more and more capable models running on device, not just on H100s, but on phones and watches, etc. In my opinion, this is another huge step forward that will allow Apple to obliterate and crush competition in this space, offering a truly private and on-device LLM that will be your personal everything. And I say this even knowing that uh, portions of GGML have been merged into Android, which means that technically, there is GGML and Llama C++ on almost a billion Android devices currently. However, I still think Apple has an edge here. So what actually made this possible? So obviously this developer hasn't released their entire source code, but basically what has happened here is we have actually seen some tooling released by Gigi Ernov, the creator of GGML, that provides these runners and packages for Swift, which for those of you who don't know is what you write iOS apps in. So basically, uh, Mistral is similar enough to Llama C++ that this makes it possible to use local inference of Llama C++ on an iPhone or any model that works similarly enough, which this developer has figured out how to do. Basically, there is a really simple test flight app that you can have um, access to in this repo, which I will link below that pretty much lets you run a bunch of quantized models that can run with GGML on an iOS device. What's interesting is some of these work better than others. You can try a bunch of different models. You can see here that the reason this works on this app I'm showing you is 
Uh, Mistral 7B 0.1 is an option. And what's cool is they've just ticked this version to 0.2 and really just made a better like app experience in general, which I think is worthwhile. So I love the idea and I, honestly, and I think this is the future, but there is a question. Um, isn't there a limit to what we can do on mobile devices? Specifically, the issue of just the thermodynamics of how much compute and how much heat we can manage in a small device. Of course, the LLMs are here, this is usable, and basically the RAM and the experience is all based on speed. So it's based on how many tokens per second the neural compute cores in the Apple Silicon can actually take our request and then spit out something that is inference that sounds useful. So the path forward here gets really interesting because Apple still has an advantage even though Android devices actually have TPUs embedded. And I would argue that Apple Silicon having their uh, neural compute cores is now probably more valuable than having TPUs in every Android device, at least the ones that Google makes internally. Basically, I'm saying the neural engine in Apple's hardware is clearly winning with tooling. They've, they've already done the hard part of making the hardware, no pun intended, and the software and kind of general ecosystem is just developing faster around Apple tooling, and it's not even being done by Apple, which is the most meaningful and incredible part of all of this. Xcode already has an ML studio, and this isn't only just for embedding and integrating models and apps, but you can also fine tune and do a lot of things that otherwise you need kind of some special custom tooling to do. And I don't think it's a huge stretch to think that we're going to slowly start to see even mixture of experts models ending up on mobile devices. The difference being we'll have fewer experts for the time being as RAM is still a limitation, but as these neural engines on Apple devices get more complex and get more capable, I don't think it would be wild to see browser integrated RAG plus LLM uh, to do things you know, like summarize text messages or generate replies, or to even start getting into vision and multimodal models, which Apple is already doing with a lot of their tooling around um, NERFs and 3D creation and capture with iOS devices. So let me know in the comments if you guys think this app is great, if you think it's kind of useless and more of a gimmick just running Mistral 7B on iOS. Uh, if you have an iOS device, do you want to try this? Let me know in the comments below. Everything I've mentioned is linked below. And as always, if you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and share our content. We love doing this. We can't wait to get back to our normal cadence in 2024, and we'll see you in the next one.